All right, Brady Carter, thank you very much. And here with us now is Roger Severino, a senior fellow at the Ethics and Public Policy Center and former director of the Office for Civil Rights at the Department of Health and Human Services. Uh, Roger, welcome. It's great to have you with us this evening. Uh, so what do these mandates mean for businesses? Well, it depends if you're covered. It's an incredible overreach by the federal government to say under OSHA, a health and safety occupational standard, that any business over 100 employees must follow this new mandate. This is such a stretch of federal power. We have not seen something like this before since, I guess, Obamacare, when the government tried to take over health care. So if you are above that cap, it's an open question as to whether or not the federal government has the power to do this. And think about what OSHA is about. It's about chemical exposures in the workplace, hard hat regulations on construction sites. Never do they go into a person's personal medical records to find out what their immuniza immunization history is. This is conduct outside of the workplace that they say must be part of the workplace. This is a real stretch and we live under a constitution of enumerated powers, separation of powers and federalism. This is not the way it should be. And under the, the cover of emergency powers, I just don't see enough legal support for this overreach on the part of the Biden administration. Roger, in your career, you fought for religious freedom and freedom of conscience for years. Uh, can you give us some examples of religious reasons for opposing vaccine mandates that you think will be able to hold up in court as religious exemptions? Yes, and people are entitled to religious accommodations under Title VII of employment discrimination law. People need to exercise their rights. Now, it has to be absolutely sincere. And for those who object to the taking of human life and abortion and the use of aborted fetal cells in the development or testing of these vaccines, then they have a legitimate, sincere religious claim and they should be accommodated. Uh, other religious beliefs vary tremendously and it could be personalized to the person. It doesn't have to be based on a hierarchical religion. It is an individualized, sincere assessment. And if your religious beliefs say, I cannot in good conscience accept this, I should not be pressured to accept this, then that should be respected to the extent allowed under the law. Now the test has to be strengthened, that's why we need a strong Supreme Court to say religious accommodations, even under these circumstances, need to be respected. We already give Roger. accommodations for medical reasons, we need to do it for religion as well. How are those backed up though, you say sincerely held religious beliefs, which we know the courts have upheld, but how do you, how do you back that up? What we want to avoid is employers and worst of all, the federal government becoming some sort of star chamber inquisitorial board probing into people's religious beliefs. If a person says, these are my reasons, I uh, disagree with abortion, sanctity of human life, I know that the, the aborted fetal cells are part of the testing, that should be it. That should be the, clo the case closed on whether or not they have a sincere belief. You don't need a letter from your pastor. You don't need a letter from a synagogue. Your statement of your sincere religious beliefs should be the end of the matter unless they have some reason to think you're lying, but most people of faith don't. These are things that, that, that are things that cost them uh, to, to put themselves out there to tell their employer because they face right. retaliation. So it should be taken uh, on its face as sincere in most cases. All right, Roger Severino, we have to leave it there. We appreciate you joining us. Thank Thanks, you. Roger. It's good to see you. Thank you.